Hi guys, Stefan here from Tech Testers, and today I'm going to talk about something very boring, and that is storage for your PC. But it's also one of the most important things if, like us, you're working with your computer a lot. So if you have a lot of photos and videos, or if you're looking to get started with a Synology NAS, this video is for you. Now I'm going to split this video in two parts. First, I'm going to talk about the hardware, some of the stuff we use, some of the recommendations we have for you. And then the second half of this video, I'm going to explain to you how to actually get started with a NAS. And it's going to be very entry level. So we're going to set, um, set it up. We're going to look at how you access all your photos and videos from anywhere in the world and do something very important and it is to set a backup so if something does happen to it your files are safe let's get started this video is brought to you by the MSI Clutch GM50. The GM50 features a super light, ergonomic, right-handed design, a solid optical sensor and Omron switches rated at 20 million clicks. It also has an RGB dragon on it, which makes it at least 50% cooler than its competitors. Check it out using the links in the description below. So the first question when you look at getting a NAS device is which brand? And the reality is it's very subjective. You find a lot of people happy with their brand and they're comfortable with. And for us, it's the same. I swapped the Synology a couple of years ago from DIY servers, and I just had no reason to look any further. It's easy to use. The software is very mature and, and feature packed, and I just didn't have a single reason to swap to anything else. So I'm also very happy recommending this to anyone from a beginner to a more professional user. And then the second question, of course, is which model? Now we use several um, Synology NAS devices for ourselves. We have a 418, a 416, a 918 plus, and we have this 218 plus over here. Now, if you are a beginner, the 218 plus, in my opinion, is one of the nicest devices to get started with. It's not one of the cheapest, but it is essentially a full featured NAS. So it has a strong CPU, plenty of memory that is upgradable, and it can do anything you want even if at some point during your experience you decide to do more with your NAS because that's what owning a NAS is all about. It can do a million things. You'll start with five. After three years, you'll be doing 30 with it and you'll be happy that you got a slightly nicer model. Now, if you're just looking to store files and you're not doing anything else, then I do think the 218 and the 218 Play are fantastic models as well. What I would avoid is the single bay models because you are gonna run into storage issues before you know it. And the Marvel CPU that's in those is just terrible. Like even right out of the box, the software will feel sluggish. So avoid those at any cost. If you're a bit more serious about your use, I think the one you should look at is the 918 Plus. So that's the four bay version with a few extras. So it has a bit more RAM to begin with. Again, it's still upgradable, so that's not much of a problem. But the four bays is great for expandability. And there's also an option to SSD cache it. So if you're serious about, for example, video editing, that SSD cache is a very nice extra to have. It's not cheap, but it's one of those NASs that will just last and will give you some upgradability for the future. And that's exactly the reason why we use it ourselves. The second part of your purchasing decision is very difficult because what hard drives do you buy? And the reality is there's a lot of information and it's really hard to judge. Most importantly is because what you care about mostly is the reliability and there's no way to properly test that. Now Backblaze, which is a large storage provider in the US, provides a lot of information about how drives perform in their situation, but it doesn't necessarily translate to how it works in a home or in a small office. Bottom line, however, is that hard drives, any brand, can break. So what you should do is have a backup and that's exactly what we're gonna do later in this video. Now what we have here is the Seagate Ironwolf drive. So when we look at our test results of the things we can test, which is the speed, the noise and the power consumption, these are actually very nicely well-balanced drives. They're fast, they're on the quiet side of the spectrum and they're fairly power efficient. And those last two things is what you care about. Now it is very important to keep in mind that even with the quieter hard drives, you do not want to put them in your bedroom and you do not want to have them on your desk while you're working with it. Because trust me, I've, I've done it, it drives you crazy. Still, it's nice to know that if you put them somewhere in a living room, it shouldn't bother you under normal circumstances. And another part that's interesting about the Seagate drives in particular is that there's actually integration with the Synology software. So if you go in the software, you'll get some more information about the health of the drives and both Synology and Seagate claim it will help you detect drive failures quicker. Now, the thing is, I haven't had a single drive die on me yet, so it's kind of hard to judge if that's true, but it definitely doesn't hurt to have with a product that relies on trust more than anything. Personally, I do think you should keep an eye on the four terabyte models and larger for two reasons. One, three terabyte and below does not have that health management, and second, they don't have the anti-vibration sensor that this model has. Again, I cannot really say what the impact is on the overall durability of the drive, but it's one of those things that again just doesn't hurt to have included when you're trusting your data on drives like this. All right, so one interesting thing I've noticed that Synology and Seagate do sell these things as a bundle as well. So if you're lazy, because let's be honest, it's not exactly hard, you don't need a screwdriver to install them. Um, if you're lazy, you can get them with the, with the hard drives pre-installed. Personally, I think you should just keep an eye on 
wherever they're cheapest because sometimes the bundle is cheaper, sometimes they're cheaper separately and there's really no reason to spend more. So just to summarize the hardware part, if you're just looking to start to storing your files, then something like a 218 is, is great. Get the plus if you do want to experiment a bit more with the NAS functionality, you're not going to regret that. And if you're serious about storage, whether you're a prosumer, creative editor, anything like that, just look at getting the DS918 plus because you're not going to regret that SSD option, the extra upgradability you have there. As for the hard drives, again, it's a bit of a toss up. These Iron Wolves we had pretty good experience with so far and they offer a nice balance. Just remember to get four terabyte or larger if you want to make use of that other functionality. Now that's it for the hardware bit. Let's set this up, start doing some basic stuff with it and see how that goes. The installation is actually very easy. We plug the network cable into our NAS, we power it on, we simply go to find.synology.com where it'll automatically detect our new NAS. Press connect. Let's pretend we read the end user license agreement. Then we press install now and we'll go make ourselves a cup of coffee because at this point it will take a few minutes. Now at this point we'll have to give our NAS a name which can be anything you want. We'll also have to set up our admin login which is very important and make sure you pick a very strong password especially if you want to set up remote access later because that will open your NAS up to access from the internet. Now we can decide if we want the Synology to automatically update itself all the time, update important fixes only or if we want to do it manually. Now I do recommend you let it update the important updates and fixes at least, and if you want you can just set it to do that at night. I also recommend you leave on the smart test to check the hard drive health periodically and give you warnings if problems are detected. Now and here we get to Quick Connect, which is a very important part of the Synology experience because it's their way to allow access to your NAS from the internet without any prior networking knowledge. Now network professionals will undoubtedly have their own opinion, but this is quick and easy and doesn't require anything like port forwarding. So simply pick an ID and from then on your NAS will be accessible on the internet by going to quickconnect.to slash whatever your Quick Connect ID is in your browser. Now after that you can install some recommended applications. Personally, I would avoid that and just install what you're actually gonna use, but that's just me. You have to accept a few more terms as well. And you can accept the feature to find the NAS if you want. It's not something you lose, I guess, but hey. And if you want, you can share some analytics data with Synology, which we're not gonna do. And there we are now inside the operating system of our NAS. Now, if you're serious about learning a lot of new things about your device, I definitely recommend reading or watching them. They're actually not bad and it might give you some cool ideas. But what we're going to do now is put some pictures on it and access those remotely. So in order to get your NAS to do something new, you need to install the right package. Much like installing software on your PC, every package has its purpose. Now, the first time you open the package center, which is basically Synology's app center, except where most things are free, it might look a bit scary as there are a ton of apps. The key is figuring out what you want the NAS to do and then installing the right application for it. For your photo storage and sharing needs, Synology recommends that you use their Moments app. Now this is surprisingly like Google's photo software where the focus is on automatically uploading all of your photos from your smartphone, which is really great. And then it's all about the experience of reliving those moments rather than old school sorting your pictures into separate folders like we used to do on our PCs. Now the difference of course is that Google service sends it to Google's servers and Moments instead sends it to your own self-controlled storage unit, so it's nice. Now the other difference, however, is a lot less attractive for Synology, as in my experience with Moments, it's just terrible and it feels broken. Maybe it's me, but I've had edit everything from duplicate uploads or to files not uploading at all, so I genuinely recommend you do not use this application. But not to worry, because there is a package that actually does work really well, and it's called PhotoStation. Now, PhotoStation is a lot more traditional in the sense that it uses old school physical folders. Now, to my own annoyance, it does recommend you use Moments instead, but just say no, or rather, not now. Now, PhotoStation is actually really straightforward. It does use something called albums, but essentially those are physical folders on your drive, which you'll actually see later. Now, you can set these to be public or private, or if you add some user accounts to your NAS, you can easily say who has access to each folder. So that's really simple and really nice. Oh yeah, and it has a dark mode, which I think everyone agrees on at this point is actually better. Now, if you were to log into your NAS remotely, wherever you are in the world, using the Quick Connect link you made earlier, you can easily upload a bunch of photos to your NAS. It's simply drag and drop. Now, if you're in the same network, like you usually would be at home or at the office, you can simply go to your NAS in Windows Explorer and there you'll find the actual folder of each of the albums. 
So from there on, it's basically the same thing working with these files as it would be with any file on your local PC. So we have our pictures sorted into folders. We've seen how you upload them to your NAS from outside your house. But what if you want to access them from your phone or your tablet? And that's pretty easy too, no matter where you are. You simply download the DS Photo app for Android or iOS. You log in using the same Quick Connect ID we saw earlier and your username and password. So again, you don't need to have any networking knowledge and you'll have quick and easy access to your photos. From there, you can easily browse, manage, or share your images, which is actually what we use a lot when, for example, posting on social media. So let's talk about one of the most important things about data storage, and that is backups. Now there is a ton of ways to do this, and there is no one right way or one wrong way, but today I'm gonna focus on one, and that's Backblaze. Now Backblaze has a service called B2 Cloud Storage, which is pretty cheap. It's actually free for the first few gigabytes, so it's free to begin and set up, and it has easy integration with Synology. Now to get started, you simply go to backblaze.com slash b2, I'll put a link in the description below, and simply make an account. Now you don't have to enter any credit card information or so on. Now once you've logged in, please note down the two numbers. One is your account ID and the other is the application key. Both are accessible from the first screen you see here. You'll need these later. Now make a bucket, call it something like backup and leave it on private. Now what's really nice is that there's not much in terms of settings that you have to go through. There's one thing that you do want to look at however, and that's called the lifecycle settings. Now at the core, Backblaze B2 is a version backup, which means it keeps all versions of every file you've ever made, if you want. Regret editing that book you were once writing? Well, you can go back to any one of its previous versions, which is pretty great. The downside, of course, is that you can create a high storage cost, especially if you're into video editing and are getting all these versions of these different video files. So for this example, we'll tell it to keep three old versions of each file instead. So now we've made our cloud storage and it's time to tell the NAS to send all its files there as a backup. To do that, we start by installing and opening the cloud sync package in the Synology OS. That'll offer a Backblaze B2 option right away. Now here we have to put in that account ID and application key from earlier, and we have to select the backup bucket that we made as well. Now what we're gonna tell it to do is to keep our photo folder safe. And to do that, we'll create a photo folder under the remote path as well, so we don't get a super messy backup. And we're going to tell it to upload local changes only. That means any changes on the NAS will be pushed to our backup, but not the other way around. Now here you can also choose to turn on encryption if you want, and you can decide whether deleted files on your NAS are going to be deleted on the backup as well. Now keeping those deleted files might add some storage costs, but I do think it is worth it to prevent against those accidental deletions. Also, probably not a bad idea is to schedule the backup to only run at certain times, for example, during the night. And that's it really, not even five minutes later, we have our backup up and running, which will help keep our data safe even if the entire NAS gets destroyed. So there we have it, setup was easy, we've shown how to set up the NAS as a photo station and we've got our backup sorted. And yes, this is only a fraction of the things you can do with this device and obviously the amount of apps can be frightening at times, but that's kind of what owning a NAS is all about. It's about starting simple, exploring and ending up with a bunch of neat packages that just happen to help you and your use case. Anyway, that's it for today. If you like this kind of content, just let us know and we'll look into more NAS content for the future. Leave a like if you liked it, subscribe to see more and see you in the next one. Bye.